Next on a star-studded episode of the Broadway show, we're on the road to the Tonys and on the red carpets for three huge opening nights on Broadway. Tony Award winner Anna Lee Ashford is here to talk about her Broadway return in Sweeney Todd. I'm Tamsin Fidel, and this is The Broadway Show. Broadway's biggest shows, Broadway's hottest tickets, they're all right here, along with Broadway's brightest stars. I'm Tamsin Fidel, this is The Broadway Show, so let's get going. We are now officially on the road to the Tonys, and the nominations are in. So let's take a look at a few of the nominees in the Best Musical category. Anne Juliet, Kimberly Akimbo, New York, New York, Shucked and Some Like It Hot. Up for Best New Play, Ain't No Mo, Between Riverside and Crazy, Cost of Living, Fat Ham, Leopold Shot. Here's the Best Musical Revival category, Camelot, Into the Woods, Parade, and Sweeney Todd. And in Best Play Revival, A Doll's House, The Piano Lesson, The Sign in Sidney Brewstein's Window, and Top Dog Underdog. In this year's most nominated show is Some Like It Hot. For a complete list of nominees, head over to Broadway.com. I love this city! They're cheering for me now. It's time to be a part of it. New York, New York is now open and nominated for nine Tony Awards, including Best Musical. We hit the red carpet on opening night. That's right, Tamsin. New York, New York is a big, splashy Broadway musical celebrating the greatest city in the world. I'm here on opening night to talk to all the stars. It's opening night of a Cantor and Ebb musical, and you're a part of it. You wanted to be a part of it. I wanted to be a part of it in New York, New York. I write love letters to New York in everything I do. I famously love my neighborhood. I famously love this city, and um, it was not another opportunity to do that in a different time period with one of the greatest composers in our art form, so um, it was a joy. You guys are playing Francine and Jimmy. This is a big deal. This is an entire musical, not just based on a song, but based on this beautiful love story. It says, like, like, leave your New York cynicism outside and come in and enjoy this with us. Well, I think it's lovely because actually it invites both dreamers and cynics in because yep. it shows all four seasons of life, not just in this city, but in, um, in romance and love and heartbreak and all that. It's also lovely that I think both of us get to play it in metaphor with the city itself. And you get to feel out your own personal love story with this city because if you don't have it then you're probably going home <laughs> it's too hard you're at a new candor and Ev opening in 2023 i'm just excited to see something new yeah. my dresser julian who we've done eight broadway shows together he's dressing colton this is like his 28th broadway show oh my god and i haven't seen him so excited about a show in forever and he's like he's like i mean your shows are fine but this one's really great i was like okay great i think to like be living in a time where we're getting to see like a new candor and ebb is yeah. just like pinch me all the stuff of my childhood musical theater dreams. That New York emotion that we all sort of felt at one time, sometimes we still feel it, we can still feel it. Moving to New York, that energy that we all have when we come here, knowing it that never you really goes be away. part of it always. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, it's still in us all. New York, New York, the city's so nice, they had to name it twice. <laughs> I am guilty of not, not ever seeing the uh -huh. movie. That's okay, it's very different. With fresh eyes. That's the best. And I best. live in New York. Have you heard the song? Uh, I No, how does it go? New York, New York. What is it like to be up there, to see those faces in the a beautiful St. James Theater, to get to sing those lyrics and that music? I mean, what is it like to experience a moment like that on Broadway? The song for me is about my gratitude for the city. This place offered me something I couldn't get anywhere else. And so I'm just saying thank you. And I'm looking out at a bunch of New Yorkers and thanking them for being here and thanking them for building up this city, the one that I got to live my dreams in. That's all, as simple as that. I'm just very grateful that we wrote it. Do you still have those emotions about New York City? Do you still? Absolutely. And the, the, the lousier the rest of the world becomes, the more I, the more I'm glad that I'm here. John Hayes is nominated for a Tony for lead actor for the new play, Good Night Oscar. We hit the red carpet opening night.
This is a true story. It's the golden age of television. Jack Parr is the host of The Tonight Show, and Sean Hayes plays Oscar Levant, a Hollywood actor, concert pianist, and wildly unpredictable talk show guest. Shakespeare just got invited to a cookout. It's a new take on Hamlet that makes the bard accessible for the modern day audience, and it is deliciously good. Now, Fat Ham is nominated for five Tony Awards, including Best Play. We sat down with the show's rising star, Marcel Spears. I think my uncle had my father killed. Yeah! Now my father wants me to kill my uncle. Straight him open! I feel like I'm a natural storyteller. I feel like I've been doing it since I was little. Uh, I, I was like in church plays and school plays, and it was just something that I did. It wasn't anything that I, I focused on until um, high school. Uh, theater sort of proved itself to be an outlet um, for me to process some really difficult emotions at the time. Uh, when, I, when I first started taking theater seriously, it was right after Hurricane Katrina, so my family had just relocated to Texas. I was in a new city. I wasn't with like the friends that I had grown up with since like pre-K. Um, I wasn't uh, in an environment that I knew well. Uh, and theater was well suited for helping me process some of that. Ah, there's the rub. What? It's Shakespeare. So I get to work with James Imes, who who wrote a play that is like so many parts of me. Like it's it's Shakespearean, but it's also like really really black and really really just like it's full of joy and levity, but it also has such heart and some such depth, like so many colors to it. I get to work with people that I've been watching forever. Billy Eugene Jones, I've been watching Billy. Billy is a is a goat. I've been watching Billy since I got to New York. So I get to work with Billy. I get to work with Benja, who I saw her in Booty Candy and Barbecue. And I was just like, this lady is the best. I get to work with my friends, Adriana, Chris, and Calvin. These are like my contemporaries. It's like this culmination of everything that you would want for this and then take it to Broadway where people like love it and, and are, are going on this crazy emotional roller coaster. I couldn't have planned that. I could not have planned that. Before they hit it big, both Rachel Brosnahan and Oscar Isaac got their start on the New York stage. Now they've just brought a rare piece of theater history to Broadway. It's the sign in Sidney Brustein's window from legendary playwright Lorraine Hansberry. This new production at Broadway's James Earl Jones Theater was just nominated for a 2023 Tony for Best Revival of a Play. It's really cool. There were so many people who weren't able to see the show at BAM, partially because it was such a limited run. It's also a track for some of us to Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, uh, and so it's nice to be so central and to be able to reach maybe an even wider audience and to reach folks who may never have had the opportunity or be interested necessarily in seeing something like this before. Lorraine Hansberry is hilarious. It's just, she's so sharp. It's endless, the discoveries and the excavation. It just never ends, so it doesn't feel like, okay, now we're just gonna present what we found out. It's, it's like another chance to continue to try to uncover um, this glorious, difficult, wild play. The Demon Barber of Fleet Street's back on Broadway, the first full-scale revival of Sweeney Todd in years. The classic revenge tragedy is heading into Tony Night this year with eight nominations, including nods for stars Josh Groban and past winner Annalie Ashford. Let's check back in with Paul Wontorek. That's right, Tamsin. Already a Tony winner for You Can't Take It With You, Annalie Ashford is back on Broadway, wowing audiences in Sweeney Todd. We had a chance to catch up at Gallo Green. How are things down on Fleet Street? Ah, it's so good to see you. <laughs> I saw you down on Fleet Street. How, how's the, uh, your accent work is excellent, by thank the way. Thank you, thank you very much. Oh, I'm talking it all the time. Was that a stressful uh, element to this performance? I did Kinky Boots for the first year, yeah. and all of us did the same thing. We all sort of talked in an accent all the time. Yeah. But Lauren was from the North and Mrs. Lovett is from the South. So there's, there's certain sounds like, it's darker in the North, like punch card, like punch card, but it would be like punch cards, like if you were in the South, little no, things like that, that was like, oh, it was like a mind puzzle. You are now locked into a Broadway run. The show's a hit. You mentioned uh, Kinky Boots, which was uh, obviously a big moment for you in your career. Kinky Boots, you were living in the joy of 
being in a world with fabulous drag queens every night and raise you up and Jerry Mitchell full out choreography and the energy of Kinky Boost. How's it living in the world of Sweeney Todd, which, which seems pretty heavy? It's a beautiful, different kind of magic. You know, it's so reminiscent to Shakespeare to me. You have this great material that's, you know, one of the, the all time beautiful pieces in the American musical theater. Yeah. And it will be forever because it's so good on the page that it's everlasting. And just like Shakespeare, you look at what's at the on the text and you make it your own. So while every show that you do has its own magic and it's up and ups and downs, this, this show feels like I'm doing a true classic. This show specifically is so balanced. We think of it being so dark, but Steve, Stephen Sondheim always said, well, it's a comedy. Mm. You know, he'd always be like, it's a musical comedy, musical comedy thriller. So I always try to, to lean into that. You obviously did Sunday in the Park with George, uh, with Jake Gyllenhaal, I've heard of him. He's, he's pretty good. I don't know who you're talking about. Apparently Jake he's Gyllenhaal. like an MMA fighter now. I mean, <laughs> like that guy. <laughs> I know, how about that? All I could think about was like, oh, good for you. I just can't imagine how many, how many hours were spent on blood, sweat and tears in the gym and and protein. Right, because you know how committed about, he is. Oh yes, he's <laughs> so, so committed and amazing and genius person. But yeah, it was like, when he commits, he commits. Yeah, but that was a beautiful uh, Sondheim production, Sunday in the Park with George, and you both were amazing in it. But you got to do that with Sondheim around. Now this is sort of the first big Sondheim production with Sondheim not around. What's that like? I mean, it, it definitely, it's a new era now uh, because he was so involved in all of his productions. You know, I just read an article that Patti Lapone did after Company and she said, I miss Steve and I miss his notes. And it just felt like, oh, I, a weight had been sort of lifted from me because I've been feeling that so deeply. Like I, I miss him in a way that I, I knew I would, but creatively, the day-to-day -day of his presence was such a blessing and I knew it at the time and I knew I would miss him, but I remember our first preview, our first run through in the room, opening night, all through previews, I really, I would go back and read notes that he gave me from Sunday in the Park because I knew they were gonna be applicable to this. I feel his spirit every day. I pray to him and go, hey, I'm excited to do these puzzles with you today, every day before the show. I talk to Angela Lansbury. Oh. You know, I say my prayers to God, and then I say hey to Steve and Angie and my grandma. And <laughs> <laughs> wow, I love that. Okay, they're all with you. They're all in the dressing room. We are at the Lunds, too. We're at the Lunds. <laughs> <laughs> with the Lunt Fontan, so I'm like, hello, Lunds, please join us today. All the angels are there. But I do feel that even though he didn't get to be with us physically during this experience, oh, He's all over every single page and moment. So yeah, I miss him, like, big time. This is a Broadway show, and we're back in just a few. Peace, I'm Common, and you're watching the Broadway show. Love. We're celebrating another huge opening night on Broadway. Laura Linney and Jessica Hecht are back on Broadway, starring in summer 1976. It's a moving and insightful story of an unlikely friendship formed over one faithful summer. It's time to take a walk with a Broadway star, so let's send it out to Charlie Cooper. All right, Natasha, we're walking to work. Here we are, here we are. Very, very excited. I mean, I have to know from you what it feels like to just be able to make this walk every single day wow. and to know the powerful role you're playing in something like it hat. It's absolutely amazing. It truly is amazing. Before I booked my first Broadway show, I used to walk these streets, yeah. touching the theaters, you know, and um, claiming my space, um, saying that I'd be here one day and I wanted my picture up on the marquee on the side of the theater. <laughs> Today, having had that happen, it's just amazing. I get to walk by all these other, I see friends on the wall now, you know, we're walking by Life of Pi now and um, yeah. different shows. A parade is right down the street, and I did the tour parade. And so um, I'm very familiar with most of the shows, and I got friends in Bad Cinderella over there, and, and my show is full of love with a lot of different people um, in Some Like It Hot. So it's just um, a dream. I get to live my dream every day. Some like it rough, some like it tame. Give me a more to love the flame. Some like it hard and hot is what I got for you. 
show is so big and it's so much fun. The music is incredible. Mm -hmm. You really make the role of Sweet Sue your own. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about that. Sweet Sue is like a melting pot of a lot of my relatives. <laughs> my mom, my aunt Christine, um, my uncle Mayfield. My uncle Mayfield was a little rowdy. Okay. You know, he would, maybe I should, well, I can tell this now. He'd drink a little bit. Okay. You know, do, all, do, do some Everybody of everything. Everybody has that one uncle. Everybody has that. I had, a, well, I had a couple. But <laughs> Uncle Mayfield and his wife was like the opposite. She was like stone cold church. Well, you, you can't know, have both of them. Everything, you know? just telling us. So, um, so the, the exact opposite. So, the, so they're mesh. But she's, she was a boss. She was in control. Sue is a lot like that. She's running this business, she has this band, she's traveling, and she's taking um, people from a place that they, they're uncomfortable in life to a place that they want to be. So I couldn't help but to think about the female leadership on stage and just the little girls who might be watching you, especially the little girls of color who yeah. might be watching you. Yeah. Do you ever think about that and just that impact? I think about it every day. Yeah. I think about it every day. I'm here lately. I've been thinking about it a lot more than usual because I see the young people coming to the show, and occasionally I get to see people on the front row that are really, really small. Yes, I think about little girls coming, little brown girls coming every day. I think about sitting in those seats and being able to see someone that looks like you on stage, dreaming in, in a way that you hadn't thought of before. And I'm hoping that that happens every day. Well, listen, we're already here. <laughs> yes, and yes. thank you for letting us walk you to work. Oh my goodness. Thank you so no, much, Natasha. Thank you, thank you. Thanks for staying with us for the latest episode of The Broadway Show. Glad you're here. Tom Stoppard's Olivier Award-winning play, Leopold Stadt, is up for six 2023 Tony Awards, including Best Play. Here's Beth Stevens with another edition of Building Broadway. Thanks, Tamsin. Tom Stoppard is one of the most prolific and acclaimed playwrights of our time. His play, Leopold Stadt, has been called a late masterwork. I sat down with him at the Morgan Library. Can we start with the title, Leopoldstadt. I think that audiences walking in think that is the setting for the play, and that's not quite right. No, it's not. It's like a kind of resonant memory. Leopoldstadt is part of the city of Vienna. It was the Jewish quarter for a long time. So Leopoldstadt, the title of the play, uh, refers first of all to the place this family came from towards the end when the Nazis stormed into, into Vienna. The Jewish families were evicted at the very least. You know, really bad things happened to them. So the title refers to where they've come from. It refers to where they were going at that time, World War II. And they were the lucky ones who got back to Leopoldstadt. You're not known for mining your personal history in your plays. No. And you do in this play a bit. Yes, I it do. It is a work of fiction, of course. Absolutely. And there's a character that stands in, perhaps, for you in the final scene. Undoubtedly, yep. Tell me about creating that character. And it feels out of, out of character for you to do that. Well, in one way of putting it is that this was the character I didn't have to create because he was me. We're talking about a young Englishman in his mid-twenties who also fled from the Nazis in Vienna, who also arrived in England at the age of eight. The little bits he says about his boyhood and his upbringing are absolutely my experience. How did it feel to create that scene with that character for you? Did it feel vulnerable? No, I didn't feel vulnerable. I was, if it's possible to say this, I felt moved by it. Although, you know, the act of writing uh, is, is quite an objective act. Uh, there's a certain kind of, kind of craft level to it. You, you have to get it to write as a craft, but at the same time, it's working on an emotional level, you hope. As I recall it, uh, writing certain lines for this character, yeah, they, it moved me in the act of writing, yes.
It's the final weekend to help choose the nominees in this year's Broadway.com Audience Choice Awards. Every year, we give theater fans a chance to choose their favorite shows and stars of the season. The entire process is guided by the fans' votes, including picking the nominees. That vote wraps up Sunday at midnight. Head over to Broadway.com for more information. That's all for now. I'll see you next time. I'm Tamsin Fidel, and this is The Broadway Show.